Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what a traumatic brain injury is, the symptoms of a TBI, TBIs and epilepsy, a healthy brain versus a brain affected by a TBI, concussions and the risk of epilepsy, chronic, traumatic encephalopathy, post-traumatic epilepsy, and treatments available. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link in the description section below and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, a traumatic brain injury is defined as a form of an acquired brain injury which occurs when a sudden trauma causes changes to the brain. Traumatic brain injuries can be mild, moderate, to severe. Depending on the degree of the injury can result on how the injury impacts someone's life. According to Mayo Clinic, Symptoms of mild traumatic brain injury are headache, nausea or vomiting, fatigue, sensitivity to light or sound, dazed, confused, disoriented, memory or concentration problems, mood changes, depression, and difficulty sleeping. According to Mayo Clinic, symptoms of moderate to severe traumatic brain injury are loss of consciousness, convulsion seizures, loss of coronation, profound confusion, agitation, combativeness, unusual behavior, slurred speech, coma, or other disorders of consciousness. According to Mayo Clinic, symptoms of traumatic brain injury in children are change in eating, nursing habits, easy irritability, persistent crying, change in ability to pay attention, change in sleep habits, seizures, sad or depressed mood, drowsiness, and loss of interest in favorite toys or activities. Epilepsy can develop right after a traumatic brain injury or can develop years after. The more severe the traumatic brain injury, the greater the chances the individual will develop epilepsy. According to a CDC-funded study, Researchers found that people ages 15 years and older who were hospitalized for a traumatic brain injury, one in 10 developed epilepsy in the following three years. When someone develops a traumatic brain injury, depending on what area the trauma took place can result in the long-term negative side effects a person can experience. According to the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School, Neurocritical care research, the frontal lobe is the area of the brain that is commonly affected due to motor vehicle accidents, especially injuries caused by rapid acceleration, deceleration type events. Any level of injury, no matter what area of the brain is affected, can result in life altering changes and decrease the quality of life. Taking precautions to prevent traumatic brain injury is vital. A concussion is a mild form of a traumatic brain injury. Concussions can result in other neurological conditions besides epilepsy. Studies suggest that concussions may double the risk of epilepsy for the average person and increase the risk of developing it by sixfold in people with a family history of epilepsy. According to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, about 1.7 to 3 million concussions occur each year, with about half of them going undiagnosed and untreated. Two out of every 10 high school athletes who play contact sports will experience a concussion during the school year. According to Mayo Clinic, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a term used to describe brain degeneration likely caused by repeated head traumas. CTE is a diagnosis made only by autopsy by studying sections of the brain. Athletes in football, rugby, soccer, and boxing 
are at risk for developing CTE due to the risk of repeated head injuries. Veterans are also at risk for developing CTE. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Center reported nearly 414,000 TBIs among service members between 2000 and 2019. While many of these TBIs were considered mild, veterans who are serving in combat are at high risk for multiple TBIs, putting them at higher risk for developing CTE. Post-traumatic seizures and post-traumatic epilepsy are complications from a traumatic brain injury. In approximately half of PTE cases, individuals began having seizures within the first year and 80% within the first two years. PTE is not well understood, but it is hypothesized to arise from excessive inflammation and neuronal death triggered by the initial injury. According to Mayo Clinic, mild traumatic brain injuries usually require only over-the-counter pain relievers to treat any headaches. However, traumatic brain injuries need to be taken seriously at any level and the person should be supervised to see if other symptoms arise. They also should schedule an appointment with their primary care physician to see what restrictions, if any, should be put in place to help the person recover. According to Mayo Clinic, moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries need to be treated urgently. Healthcare professionals need to make sure the person is getting enough oxygen, adequate blood supply, and maintain blood pressure. Treatment options include anti-seizure medications to help to prevent any seizure activity from taking place, coma-inducing drugs. Doctors will put a patient into a temporary coma. A comatose brain needs less oxygen to function. Treatment can help if blood vessels are unable to supply normal amounts of nutrients and oxygen. Diuretics. Diuretics help reduce the amount of fluid in tissues and increases urine output. This can help to reduce pressure and pain. According to Mayo Clinic, emergency surgery may be needed to prevent further damage. Situations that require surgery are removing clotted blood or hematomas. Bleeding outside or within the brain can result in a collection of clotted blood that puts pressure on the brain and damages brain tissue. Repairing skull fractures. Surgery may be needed to repair severe skull fractures or to remove pieces of skull in the brain. Bleeding in the brain. Head injuries that cause bleeding in the brain may need surgery to stop the bleeding. Opening a window in the skull. Surgery may be used to relieve pressure inside the skull by draining accumulated cerebral spinal fluid or creating a window in the skull that provides more room for swollen tissues. According to Mayo Clinic, rehabilitation is needed for moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries. Examples of healthcare professionals who take part in rehabilitation are physiatrists, occupational therapist, physical therapist, speech or language therapist, neuropsychologist, social worker or case manager, rehabilitation nurse, traumatic brain injury nurse specialist, recreational therapist, and vocational counselors. A traumatic brain injury is defined as a form of acquired brain injury which occurs when a sudden trauma causes changes to the brain. Symptoms can vary depending on the severity of the TBI. Complications such as epilepsy, CTE, and post-traumatic epilepsy can occur. Depending on the severity can result in how doctors treat the TBI. Rest and monitoring for mild TBIs up to surgery and anticonvulsant medications for more severe cases. For moderate and severe cases of TBI, rehabilitation is a must for many patients. There are different levels of rehabilitation for patients. Some examples are physical, cognitive, care decisions, and education. 
To learn more about traumatic brain injuries and epilepsy, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.